You recall on Monday, I was talking about how the Democratic Party needs to, you know, take seriously this whole issue of crime. They need to get ahead of it. They need to have a proactive stance. You know, sort of like Bill Clinton's 100,000 cops uh, thing, you know, uh, you know, a lot of what Clinton did was really good stuff. A lot of it was really wrong-headed, um, you know, amping up the, the war on drugs and stuff like that. But whatever you may think of it, in retrospect, you know, now that we can look back and see what parts succeeded, what parts failed, it was well-publicized, well-coordinated, well-done, and it took away from Republicans that, that cudgel of, we're the tough-on-crime party that, uh, you know, goes back to Richard Nixon and his war on drugs. But I think perhaps more interesting is what causes crime. Both violent crime, property crime, drug crimes, and, and even mental illness. And it turns out that the main, one of the main drivers of crime and these other, you know, social ills is inequality. We are wired as are all mammals. We are wired for fairness. You don't, you don't think this is true? Uh, walk into a preschool class, you know, with 10 kids and give one of them a whole pile of cookies and give everybody else one cookie and just watch what happens. Or for that matter, uh, you know, uh, walk into a dog park and give one dog a big pile of food and, you know, just a little tiny taste to a few others. You will discover that mammals are wired for fairness. And, and why? Because it's a survival skill. We are social animals. Dogs are pack animals. We are social animals. We don't survive without a healthy society around us. And inequality is a sign of an unhealthy society. It is a cancer within a society. In the article, I talk about how, um, you know, I've, I, I worked in uh, Uganda during a famine there in 1980. I was in the Philippines in 85. I was in Bogota, Colombia, working in the in a, uh, in a slum, a barrio. Uh, I worked in the Klong Toy slum in Bangkok. I, you, you know, we, all over the world, I have worked in or interacted with very, very poor people in, in slums, basically, barrios and favelas and um, around the world. And what I found was that, you know, yeah, there's crime there. Most of it is, is uh, kind of the gangs that protect the communities, as it were. Um, but you know, there's not a lot of theft. They will not put up with this. I mean, you know, if people are caught stealing, they are roundly punished. The, 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 the real crime is caused not by poverty. The, the, you know, the, the person who tried to break into our house, you know, that I told you about on Monday, um, you know, wasn't poor. Uh, she was very well dressed and walking a little dog. She wasn't hungry. She was a thief. I mean, you know, and, and, and what happens is in a society where the rich are obscenely rich and perceived as ex 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 extremely rich, you know, sh shooting their penis-shaped uh, rockets into outer space with them atop them, when in that kind of society, you get this mentality of, well, you know, rich people are stealing from us all the time. Why can't I? I'm just doing what, what everybody else does. Poverty doesn't cause the societal disintegration that leads to crime. Poverty is a symptom of that. It turns out inequality is what drives this. And, you know, it, it, it is so often missed by people, but there's, there's no, I mean, this is, this is the social contract. And it's so often missed by people. Uh, research published in the Oxford Economic Papers back in 2014, when the morbidly rich are conspicuous in their consumption, crime explodes faster than when they're discreet. Quote, Using variation within U.S. states over time, we document a robust association between conspicuous consumption and violent crime. A 2000 study published in the Review of Economics and Statistics at Harvard and MIT came to the same conclusion. Quote, inequality causes crime, not just poverty. The World Economic Forum published a paper in 2014 about the, the uh, relationship between inequality and crime in Mexico. Quote, our key finding is that, in fact, municipalities with lower inequality saw lower rates of crime. In other words, while the overall national data reveals an apparent paradox, broken down by smaller geographical regions, the paradox does not hold. Less economic disparity does lead to less crime. The economist study of 148,000 people across 142 countries 
Their headline, The Stark Relationship Between Income Inequality and Crime. Research published by the Equality Trust over at the UK, which studies the impact of economic and social inequality, found, quote, small permanent decreases in inequality, such as reducing inequality from the level found in Spain to that in Canada, would reduce homicides by 20% and lead to a 23% long-term reduction in robberies. And this is what I saw, you know, back in the 80s during that decade or so that I was working in third world countries all around the world. Which brings us to the Republican Party. The Republican Party is completely committed to not only maintaining the United States as having the highest level of inequality in the developed world, but making it even worse. You got, you know, Senator Ron Johnson talking about the IRS's jackbooted thugs. You got Senator, Republican Senator John Barrasso of Wyoming saying that, uh, you know, law-aborting Amer Americans deserve better from their government than an army of bureaucrats snooping through their bank statements. In other words, you know, no more on the IRS so that they can look into, they can finally afford to look into the tax returns of the, of the morbidly rich. Republican Senator Ted Cruz, quote, throwing billions more taxpayer dollars at the IRS will only hurt devastating lockdowns. Instead of increasing funding for the IRS, we should abolish the damn place. Right. Republicans, you know, they're, they're in with the rich people because the Supreme Court legalized political bribery. We said the, 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 the billionaires of America have their, uh, their fuel spigots right into the back pockets of the Republicans, and they're just pouring cash in there all day, every day. But the bottom line is, if we want to get crime under control in the United States, if we want to restore social cohesion in our society because it's, it's trust that is destroyed by inequality. People know Elon Musk a million times harder than the people on his assembly line. You know, he came from this family, Robert Reich says he came from a family that owned emerald mines and segregated in apartheid South Africa. Um, people know, you know, Bill Gates isn't, isn't a thousand times more brilliant. No, his mother set up a deal, uh, Robert Reich writing about this, a deal for him to provide an operating system to IBM. I mean, it, it's, it, it, people probably know that uh, Jeff Bezos started out with a quarter million dollar loan for his business he started in his garage. No, not really. Today's CEOs take in hundreds of, to thousands of times more than their employees. Back when the top income tax rate was 91% or 74%, CEOs lived in the same communities as their workers. They only took 20 to 30 times what their workers take take home. Today it's completely out of control. So bottom line, if we want to restore social cohesion in the United States, if we want to restore trust and thus reduce crime, we need to start taxing the morbidly rich. It's that simple. Tax the morbidly rich. And we have, uh, I mean, this science has proved this in uh, literally 143 countries over and over and over again. Tax the morbidly rich and your crime rate goes down.